Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again it is time for NFL Predictions. This time we are in week 13 and I am recording this from my new apartment. So this, of course, uh, this video came out a few days later than I had expected it to, but you know, life gets in the way sometimes. So we're just going to crank this out and uh, get back to our regularly scheduled programming next week when everything's more settled down. So we're going to kick things off Sunday. 12.06 at 1 o'clock p.m. with the Raiders and the Jets. There's not much that needs to be said here. The Raiders are a above-average football team and the Jets are the worst, so I have to pick the Raiders. Then the Bengals will meet the Dolphins. The Dolphins are 7-4. They've allowed 18.6 points per game this season. That's second fewest in the NFL. And they're facing a Bengals team without their leader, Joe Burrow, and just a, a maligned team all around, so I have to give this to the Miami Dolphins. They're streaking towards the playoffs. Then the Colts will meet the Texans. Texans are uh, four and seven. Colts are seven and four. Houston is four and three with Romeo Crennel as the head coach. They're were, they were zero and four with Bill O'Brien. So clearly, some positive marks being made for the Houston Texans. This would be a statement win for them as they try to claw back in a playoff position. They're not out of it yet. They're not out of it yet. They could finish 9-7 and seven or 8-8 eight and eight and still make the playoffs. But a win here against Indianapolis Division Foe uh, would go a long way in helping them climb back into a, a, a wild card spot in the AFC. I'm going to pick the Texans in this game. It's hard to bet against Deshaun Watson, uh, even though the, this Colts team is 7-4, and four, and they have looked like... A, a, a good team. I'm going to give it to the Texans. Then the Jaguars will meet the Vikings. The Jags are 1-10. Vikings are 5-6. And, and the Vikings have won four of their last five games. They started 1-5. So they have been streaking recently. And they're going to continue their streaking. Uh, the, and their winning ways. Jaguars, I don't think, have a shot in this game with poor Jake Luton at quarterback. Or whoever they start. So it's going to be a big dub for the Miami, uh, whoa, for the Minnesota Vikings. I must have the Miami Vikings. Either way, Vikings going to get the win on Sunday. Then the Saints at 9-2 and two will meet the Falcons at 4-7. and seven. The Saints have only allowed one offensive touchdown since week 9. We're in week 13, so that defense has been playing some good football. Uh, the Falcons, they have a big play offense, but... They have one of the most inconsistent rosters in the entire league. Uh, it's going to be a tough matchup for them against the Saints. Not a lot of teams match up well against New Orleans, so a tough matchup for them. And it's probably going to go to the Saints. Uh, they're going to be my pick as much as I don't like the Saints. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick the Saints just for the smart, the smart money that I uh, don't have on this game because I don't bet real money on sports. Whatever, you get the point. I'm picking the Saints. Then the Browns will meet the Titans. A battle of two 8-3 and three teams. This is going to be one of the better games of the Sunday slate. Derrick Henry is averaging 114.3 rush yards per game this season. That's the most in the NFL. And it's going to be a battle of which defense can contain which running game. And that's really going to be the deciding factor in this football game. Make the... Make the opposing quarterback beat you with their arm. And neither of these rushing attacks are easy to stop. Derrick Henry is not easy to stop in Tennessee. And Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt are not easy to stop for Cleveland. So tough, 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 tough matchups for both of these defenses. And I, I have to give it to, to Tennessee. They're just the all-around better team. They have a better quarterback, and I, I don't know if I've seen enough out of Cleveland to believe that at 8-3 and three they're a legit contender in the AFC. So for me, it'll be Tennessee and the Titans. Then the Lions will take on the Bears. Chicago has won five straight versus Denver or versus Detroit, excuse me, and I think that will be snapped. I like the Lions in this game. I like Matt Stafford, Kenny Galladay, and the lot. The Bears have looked abysmal as of late, so I'm going to give it in the upset to Detroit. 
Then the Giants at four and seven, and the Seahawks at eight and three. The Seahawks have won four straight versus the Giants, and the Giants are leading the NFC East right now in first place at only four and seven. So this is a must-win game for New York. They need to win at least two more games to really secure the NFC East. One game in their in their next four, and then the game against Dallas, of course, is a must for them. Uh, the Seahawks, their defense is leaky to say the to say the least and to be kind, but the offense in Seattle, obviously, we know how great they are. Russell Wilson has been slumping and sliding a little bit, but not so much to where I, I'd say that um, that they have no chance against the New York Giants. DK Metcalf will go up against one of the what one of the better corners in the league in James Bradbury, so. You can pretty much say that's a 50-50 matchup on the outside, and then whoever the Giants can throw at Tyler Lockett is going to make the difference in this game. Uh, no Daniel Jones, more than likely, for the Giants. It'll be Colt McCoy. So they need to come up with some creative play calling to get Wayne Goleman into space and to, to make some easy throws and to have some good reads for Colt McCoy. Uh, not impossible for New York, but highly improbable. Uh, I, I'm a... My, I'm going to use my brains here and pick Seattle. They're just the obvious pick, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants somehow find a way to come out and win this game. So I am going to go with the Seahawks. Then the Rams will meet the Cardinals. Rams are at 7-4. and four. Cardinals are at 6-5. and five. Uh, Both of these teams are looking to keep pace with Seattle out west. And... The, the Cardinals need this game worse because they just recently lost to Seattle and they have been on a downward slide. They lost to New England, so they're losing their footing rapidly and they need a big win against L.A. And the Rams are 6-0 and versus Arizona in the Sean McVay era. So a whole lot on the line here. Uh, the Rams, they need this win because if the Giants manage to beat the Seahawks and the Rams can win here, I believe they'll they'll be in first place in in the West, and the the Cardinals need this to keep pace. Uh, if they're able to win this game, then they'll match with the Rams, and they'll be tied at second or four second place. And depending on the the Giants Seahawks game, they'll either be one or two games back instead of three. So the Cardinals need this game in a big way. I'm gonna give it to Arizona. They just they need it more. They're gonna come out and they're gonna play hungry and they're gonna play fast. They're gonna play hard. Uh, give me the Arizona Cardinals. Then the New England Patriots will meet the L.A. Chargers. New England is only scoring 20.8 points per game. That is their fewest since 2000. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the loss of Tom Brady or if it's the loss of all their defensive starters because of the, the COVID policies and the opt-outs that's hurting New England worse. But they need to find ways to string wins together. They just won against uh, Arizona. They need a win here against the, the Chargers. But Justin Herbert, I'm telling you, is one of those stud quarterbacks that's going to be around for a long time. And he has the chance to do some great things against this defense. Uh, I'm going to actually pick the Chargers in the upset. I like Justin Herbert a lot. I like him a lot more than a lot of people do. So he's going to be my pick. Uh, him and the Chargers are going to be my pick to win this game. Then the Eagles will face the Packers. Packers are 11 and 2 at home since 2019. That's the best win percentage in that span. And uh, they have a pretty commanding lead over the NFC North right now. But what better way to solidify yourself as a division leader than to just put the whole thing away, beat the lowly Eagles, uh, and, and just cement yourself as the best team in the NFC North? And I need the Eagles to win as a Giants fan so we can lock up <laughs> the first place spot in the NFC East. So I'm going to pick the Packers. Then the Broncos will meet the Chiefs. The Chiefs have won 10 straight versus Denver. Make that 11 on Sunday. Then the Washington football team at 4-7 and seven will face the 11-0 Pittsburgh Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger in his career has never lost to Washington. That will continue, unfortunately. The worst 12-0 team of all time will go to Pittsburgh, and it's not even close how bad 
they are. I mean, they're not bad. Like, they're not New York Jets bad, but they're the worst 12-0 team of all time. Uh, and I'm calling them 12-0 because they're going to beat Washington. Y- y- I mean, you know how it is. I'm going with the Steelers. And then just to clarify, the, the Washington and Pittsburgh game is the first of a doubleheader on Monday night. That game kicks off at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Buffalo Bills and the San Francisco 49ers close out the Monday slate. Buffalo has lost four straight games on Monday night football. And Nick Mullins is looking to keep the 49ers in the race for the NFC West or a wild card spot in the NFC. This is ridiculous how the 49ers in their fantastic coaching just managed to stay in the race for a wild card spot. It's just, it's, it blows me away. And it truly, truly is inspiring to see how they're, they're down so many men and they still continue to find ways to, to put, put some good game plans together and win football games. It's, it's impressive. And Buffalo, I'm going to pick Buffalo. They're just over, in my mind, they're overwhelmingly better. But it's all depending on the play of Josh Allen. So I don't know if I want to put all my eggs in the Josh Allen basket. But I'm going to pick the Bills on Monday night. And then to close out the week, we have Tuesday night football kicking off at 8.05 between the 3-8 and eight Cowboys and the 6-5 and five Ravens. Baltimore has lost four of their last five. They started 5-1. and one. So if there was any game the Cowboy can ups the Cowboys could upset here in the latter half of the schedule, it would be against the Baltimore Ravens. Will they have Lamar Jackson? Don't really know as of right now. Uh, Robert Griffin the third, they refused to let him throw on Wednesday night against the Steelers. And it's really it it doesn't look good right now in Baltimore. And there's a lot that they need to fix. But I, I just I cannot see Andy Dalton and the Cowboys going into Baltimore and winning this football game. I have to pick the Ravens, not just because I'm a Giants fan, but because just the talent disparity is great, even without Lamar Jackson. So I'm picking the Ravens on Tuesday night. And the teams on their buys this week are the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. So that'll do it for week 13 in the NFL. Hope that you all enjoy the Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday slate. Be happy, be safe, watch some football, eat some great food, do all your thing. Get ready for the holiday season. It's December. Let's go. Let's stride towards Christmas. And that'll do it for me, your boy Hobo, and I'll catch each and every one of you next week for week 14 Game Picks.